이 우리의 핵 타격 사정권 안에 있으며 핵 단추가 내 사무실 책상 위에 항상 놓여 있다는 것 이는 결코 위협이 아닌 The talks in Vietnam between Donald Trump and Kim Jong Un abruptly collapsed. No deal, no ceremonial niceties, and little hope now for a quick ending to the nuclear standoff on the Korean Peninsula. Russia Peninsula. has pulled out of a key nuclear arms control treaty one day after the U.S. did the same. Russia, Russian President Vladimir Putin also announced Moscow would begin developing new weapons systems and ordered his ministers not to initiate any new disarmament talks with Washington. American partners have announced they are suspending their participation in the deal, and we are also suspending our participation. The U.S. decision ended months of speculation. President Donald Trump hinted at a pullout in October last year. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo finally announced the move on Friday. If Russia does not return to full and verifiable compliance with the treaty within this six-month period by verifiably destroying its INF-violating missiles, their launchers, and associated equipment, the treaty will terminate. <laughs> И причем Соединенные Штаты были, по сути, инициаторами этого договора с Ираном. Мы помогли, мы поддержали. Но если бы не позиция США, не было бы этого договора. И это, безусловно, заслуга президента Обамы. Потому что я считаю, это договор правильный, он разрядил ситуацию вокруг Ирана. И президент Обама может записать это, безусловно, в свой послужной список, как результат своей работы на этом направлении. Тащим мир вообще в, в совершенно новое измерение. What do I have to get involved with Putin for? I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I don't know anything about him other than he will respect me. He doesn't respect our president. And if it is Russia, which is probably not, nobody knows who it is. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. I, I will tell you this. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. Alleged by the grand jury in an indictment, Russian intelligence officers who were part of the Russian military launched a concerted attack on our political system. The indictment alleges that they used sophisticated cyber techniques to hack into computers and networks used by the Clinton campaign. They stole private information and then released that information through fake online and identities and through the organization WikiLeaks. The releases were designed and timed to interfere with our election and to damage a presidential candidate. And at the same time as the grand jury alleged in a separate indictment, a private Russian entity engaged in a social media operation where Russian citizens posed as Americans in order to influence an, an election. And as set forth in the report after that investigation, if we had had confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. Donald John Trump withheld hundreds of millions of dollars to an ally at war and a coveted White House meeting with their president to coerce or extort that nation's help to cheat in our elections. And when he was found out, he engaged in the most comprehensive effort to cover up his misconduct in the history of presidential impeachment, fighting all subpoenas for documents and witnesses, and using his own obstruction as a sword and ask, can we be confident that he will not continue to try to cheat in that very election? Can we be confident that Americans and not foreign powers will get to decide, and that the president will shun any further foreign interference in our democratic affairs. And the short, plain, sad, incontestable answer is no, you can't. You can't trust this president to do the right thing, not for one minute, not for one election, not for the sake of our country. You just can't. He will not change, and you know it. In 2016, he invited foreign interference in our election. Hey, Russia, if you're listening, hack Hillary's emails, he said, and they did, immediately. 
And when the Russians started dumping them before the election, he made use of them in every conceivable way, touting the filthy lucre at campaign stops more than a hundred times. When he was investigated, he did everything he could to obstruct justice, going so far as to fire the FBI director and try to fire the special counsel and ask the White House counsel to lie on his behalf. During the same campaign, while telling the country he had no business dealings with Russia, he was continuing to actively pursue the most lucrative deal of his life, a Trump Tower in the heart of Moscow. Six close associates of the president would be indicted or go to jail in connection with the president's campaign, Russia, and the effort to cover founders. You should too. They gave us the tools to do the job, a remedy as powerful as the evil it was meant to constrain, impeachment. They meant it to be used rarely, but they put it in the Constitution for a reason, for a man who would sell out his country for a political favor, for a man who would threaten the integrity of our elections, for a man who would invite foreign interference in our affairs, for a man who would undermine our national security and that of our allies, for a man like Donald J. Trump. They gave you a remedy, and they meant for you to use it. They gave you an oath, and they meant for you to observe it. We have proven Donald Trump guilty. Now do impartial justice and convict him. The Republican-led Senate Intelligence Committee releasing its final report, declaring the 2016 Trump campaign had repeated contacts with Russian operatives. Among the new findings, the report saying Paul Manafort, Trump's campaign chairman, represented a grave counterintelligence threat, determining he gave polling information to Konstantin Kalimnik, who the committee describes as a Russian intelligence officer. Senate investigators also concerned that Manafort may have been involved in the Russian efforts to hack emails from the Democrats' 2016 presidential campaigns, emails later published by WikiLeaks. And despite President Trump's claim he didn't remember speaking to his then-advisor Roger Stone about WikiLeaks, the committee saying they believe he did. But there is another side. There was a group on this side, you can call them the left, you've just called them the left, that came violently attacking the other group. So you can say what you want, but that's the way it is. <laughs> but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. also had people that were very place fine people. an infrastructure not just here at home but globally that allows us to see it quickly isolate it quickly respond to it quickly so that if and when a new strain of flu like the Spanish flu crops up five years from now or a decade from now we've made the investment and we're further along to be able to catch it. The funding we're asking for is needed to keep strengthening our capacity. There may 
and likely will come a time in which we have both an airborne disease that is deadly. And in order for us to deal with that effectively, we have to put in place an infrastructure, not just here at home, but globally, that allows us to see it quickly, isolate it quickly, respond to it quickly. So that if and when a new strain of flu, like the Spanish flu, crops up five years from now or a decade from now, we've made the investment. And we're further along to be able to catch it. I cannot think of a better example of an area where we should all agree than passing this emergency funding to fight Ebola and to set up some of the public health infrastructure that we need to deal with potential outbreaks in the future. With the heat, as the heat comes in, uh, typically, that will go away in April. I've spoken to uh, President Xi. They're getting it more and more under control. So uh, I think that's a problem that's going to go away. But when you have 15 people, and the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero, uh, that's a pretty good job we've done. It's going to disappear. One day, it's like a miracle. It will disappear. Yes. And from our shores, we've, you know, it could get worse before it gets better. It could maybe go away. We'll see what happens. You have to be calm. It'll go away. It will go away. Just stay calm. It will go away. We need a little separation until such time as this goes away. It's going to go away. It's going to go away. It will go away. You know it. You know it is going away. And it will go away. And we're going to have a great victory. Thank it's you. going to go away, hopefully, at the end of the month. And if not, it hopefully will be soon after that. But has so it is going, thinking on this Kim, it is going away. I didn't say it came, I said it's going away, and it is going away. You were saying things like, I think it's a problem that's going to go away with the we'll right days. If they go, it will go away. But I think what happens is it's going to go away. This is going to go away. It's going to go. It's going to leave. It's going to be gone. It's going to be eradicated. The United States has at least 5.4 million confirmed cases in total of the novel coronavirus, the highest in the world, and likely an undercount as the country still has not ramped up testing to the recommended levels. Public health officials and authorities are concerned about a possible fall resurgence in cases amid the start of the flu season, which will likely exacerbate efforts to treat the coronavirus. Centers for Disease Control Director Robert Redfield warned in an interview with WebMD, the United States may be in for its, quote, worst fall if the public does not follow health guidelines. On Saturday, President Donald Trump said he disagreed with Redfield's flu season projection. No, I don't agree with that. But and said he'd handled the crisis well. We've done it right. The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation is anticipating a rise in COVID-19 cases in the coming months, resulting in around 300,000 total deaths in the U.S. by December. Look at those hands. Whatever you want. Grab them by the I'm going to bomb the shit out of them. I like people that weren't captured. The behavior of this president is so alarming, it has led me to partner with leading mental health professionals to answer this one question. Is Donald Trump psychologically fit to be president? Mental health professionals rely on a textbook called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, or the DSM, to define psychological conditions and traits. The traits we see exhibited by this president are of grave concern. Very fine people on both sides. Listen to the following behaviors. A pervasive pattern of grandiosity, inflated sense of accomplishment. Excessive need for admiration, boastfulness. I alone can fix it. Hypersensitivity to criticism. Deceit, manipulation, lying. You look at what's happening last night in Sweden. Sweet aggressiveness, irresponsibility, impulsivity, a lack of remorse when hurting others. You got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Ah, oh, I don't remember. Holds fixed beliefs that are verifiably false and not amenable to change in light of conflicting evidence. God looked down and he said, "We're not going to let it rain on your speech." Together, 
these traits describe a person that feels perpetually under siege. We now call it Spygate. Unmoored by moral obligations. If Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. <laughs> Willing to put others in the gravest danger. Knock the crap out of him, would you? To secure even the most modest gains for himself. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees. We are meeting our obligation to warn the public of the harm that this president represents before it's too late.